What's up everyone, welcome back to my channel, the best place to help you get visible and get paid using social media and business strategy. Now, last week in my video, I talked about how I messed up my YouTube channel and how analytics basically helped me understand what I did wrong and what exactly I could fix. Now, today's video, I really wanna share with you how you can read your analytics, but most importantly, how to narrow it down to the top five metrics that you need to track and figure out what are the key benchmarks you need to hit. And if you're not hitting them, what levers you can pull on your channel that are fast and easy so that you can do some quick fixes before everything goes downhill. And so the good thing is, is that when you actually enter into your analytics inside the creator studio, YouTube actually lays it out to you in terms of what are the five key metrics that are most important to them. If you hit the reach tab, you're going to be able to see this funnel. Now this funnel basically lays out the five metrics that YouTube as a platform cares the most. And your responsibility as a YouTuber is to understand these metrics and try to get them up. Now these metrics are as follows, impressions, click through rate, views, view duration, and watch time. Now, I don't know about you, but how many of you have seen this funnel before, but you didn't know how to read it, you didn't know how to interpret it, and you didn't know what action to take even if your metrics were low? Well. Same, until now. So make sure you watch until the very end of this video because I'm gonna break down each of these metrics and literally give you the cheat code to YouTube success. All right, so let's talk about this funnel behind me. The first thing that you see is impressions. What the heck is that? Impressions is basically the amount of eyeballs that you've gotten on your video. It doesn't mean that they've clicked it. It just means how many times people have seen your video around YouTube, whether it's their explore page, their browse page, their search bar, whatever it is. And so what does that mean? What can you leverage? Well, the first thing that you're going to want to look at is your traffic sources. So let me write that down. Your traffic sources. This basically tells you where people are coming from, whether they are searching and that's how they land on your videos, whether they are being suggested to your videos, whether YouTube is pushing your videos. As a YouTuber, you want to know this information. So let me share my screen. Let's go into the YouTube Creator Studio and let me show you how to access this information. So when you enter your analytics, you're going to want to make sure you're on the reach tab. Then you're going to see traffic source types. You can hover over and there's an explanation for each one. And you can also click see more. Now, what I love about this feature is when you go to see more, you can click on YouTube search. And when you click on this, you're able to see all the search terms that are giving you the most traffic. Not only this, if you can go back, each of these things you can click on. So browse features, you can see where people are finding you on the YouTube platform. If you go to suggested videos and you click on that, you can see all the videos that are bringing in the most traffic. And then if you go into, let's say channel pages, you can also see the different channels that are bringing you traffic as well. So now that you know how to access your traffic sources, let me answer the question of how exactly knowing your traffic sources is going to be able to help you get more impressions to your channel. Cause that's the top of your YouTube funnel. And there are really three things. The first one is when you look at what people are searching for in order to even get to your channel, you're going to want to pay attention to that and double it down. So for example, if you notice that there are certain keywords that people are searching for. So for me, a lot of people are searching Instagram reels, then guess what? That's going to dictate what type of topics, I might want to do on my channel because I know a lot of people are searching for that. And that's kind of the key way that people are getting introduced to my channel. And so that's going to dictate a lot of the topics. Now, if I want to take it a step further and I want to make sure I get even more SEO juice search engine optimization here on Google is maybe on my website, I might create a blog post around these topics. And then what I would do if I were you is I would embed my YouTube video in that blog post. So I'm doubling the search volume that I'm getting on YouTube and on Google. So that's definitely something that you could do in order to increase your impressions. The second thing is collaborations. When you access your traffic sources, you're going to be able to identify what channels or what websites or what pages are actually pushing people to your channel. If you notice that there's another YouTuber out there that all of a sudden like is giving you a lot of traffic for some reason because you guys have mutual followers or you guys have the same type of audience, reach out to them and ask if they'd be willing to collaborate. When you join forces, you're going to be able to really maximize your reach. Additionally, if you notice that there's another random web page or maybe someone's blog is driving a lot of traffic to your channel, then maybe email them and see if you, they want to continue that feature or if you guys wanted to do something mutual or something like that in order to boost even more of that traffic to your page and have it to be mutually beneficial. Now, the last thing that I put here is video promotion. When you access your traffic sources, I showed you how you're able to actually 
see which videos are giving you the most traffic, the most impressions. I'll tell you right now that those videos are basically gonna be the best videos to push to people who are very cold on your channel because YouTube is already telling you that of all of your videos, these are the top five videos that are bringing you the most traffic. That is a good introduction to your channel. And so if I know that I don't know, these are the videos that are the best performing in terms of getting people to click on my videos and getting people to actually see my channel, then maybe I might one day do an Instagram post about, hey, here are the top five must watch videos here on my channel. And for someone who's never seen my channel before, I, at least I have the data that backs up that the likelihood that they're gonna watch these videos is gonna be pretty dang high. And so these are the different ways that you can leverage the data that you get from your traffic sources in order to increase the amount of impression that you get on your channel. All right, friends, so we talked about impressions. Now let's move on down the funnel and talk about CTR. What the heck is that? It's basically click-through rate. So of all the impressions that you're getting here on your YouTube channel, what percentage of people are actually clicking on your video? That is what click-through rate tells you, is that percentage of people that actually clicked. Now, what contributes to click-through rate? You'll notice that I have three T's right here, so I'm gonna lay it out for you. The first one is your title. Is your title on your video engaging enough for someone to want to click on it? The actual topic itself, is the topic even interesting for people to want to click on? And the last one is thumbnail. This one is really going to help you kind of identify whether or not people are really captivated by the image that they see that's associated with that video. And so these are the three levers that you can pull depending on what your click-through rate actually is. Now, before I dive into the benchmarks and what to do, let's go into Creator Studio so I can walk you through how to find this information first. So within the reach tab, you're going to click on impressions click-through rate. And how I like to look at it is I click on see more. Once you access see more, you're going to be able to see all your videos ranked by click through rate. And as you can see, my average click through rate is 4.4%. I've had some videos that has as high as 12% all the way down to videos that have much lower. And so this is where you want to access the information. All right, so let's talk benchmarks. What exactly do you need to hit to be considered average when it comes to click through rate? Well, the numbers are right behind me, three to 5%. If you're anywhere between three to 5%, you're doing good. That's normal. But if you're noticing that certain videos are less than 3%, oh, you're gonna wanna investigate that and figure out what the heck you changed that caused it to go under 3%. Did you change the format of your title? Is it too long? Is it too short? Or are you not putting the keyword front loaded in your title? So something that I do is I make sure that if my video is about Instagram Reels, I'm gonna make sure that Instagram Reels is kind of in the front of the title rather than at the end because on mobile, half of the title gets cut off. So I wanna make sure that the title is not too long. And if it is long, that the keywords are in the front or is it your topic? Did you for some reason change up your topics and you didn't necessarily change your title or your thumbnail? And so that kind of tells you that, hey, maybe people aren't interested in that topic. Or last but not least, maybe it's your thumbnail. And this is kind of how I identified that my thumbnails needed to be fixed because what I found was that I didn't change the format of my titles. I didn't really change too much the topics that I was talking about on my channel. So for instance, I've always talked about Instagram, but for some reason, recently, the same topic that I usually talk about has less click-through rate than usual. Well, I will investigate that. And what I saw was that it was actually because I changed the format of my thumbnails. And what we did as a team is we looked at all the less performing videos that had different thumbnails and we just changed them all. We went in, told our graphic designer, hey, you know, these thumbnails aren't working out for us, let's swap them. Not only this, because we knew we had a thumbnail issue and we were just kind of testing and experimenting, we leaned into this plugin called TubeBuddy. Now I have a license, I'll put the code right here, it's Vanessa's Buddy, so you could get 10% off all your licenses, but I'm gonna share my screen and show you this amazing feature that TubeBuddy has called A-B testing. So if you're ever in a place and you don't know if you wanna choose thumbnail A or thumbnail B, you actually are able to test it out and figure out which one's gonna get you the most click-through rate. So let me share my screen and show you this awesome feature. This is a paid feature within TubeBuddy and I've ran three A-B tests already for times where I'm really unsure or I'm really experimenting with thumbnails. So let me give you an example. This is a video where I wasn't sure between these two very different thumbnails. And before the test even finished, we found that the original thumbnail, which is this one, had 5.12 
1.12% click-through rate over the variation, which had 4.66. Now, obviously they're still both good, but this one definitely outperformed. So before the test was even done, we basically were confirmed that we should go with this thumbnail. So how you would create an AB test is you would click this button to create an AB test. Then you would select the video that you would run a test on. Afterwards, you would then select what type of test you want to do, whether or not you want to run the test for two weeks, a week, or whatever you want. So let's say I'm going to do 14 days. Or you can run the test until a thumbnail is proven to be better than the other. So this is where you would run until click-through rate is statistically significant. So let's say for me, I'm just going to run it for two weeks. I'm going to hit select. And then I'm going to say that it's going to start as soon as possible. So once you get to this page, you're going to be able to have your original thumbnail, but also do a test thumbnail. So let's say I'm trying to test these two. And once you hit start test, what TubeBuddy is going to do on your channel is they're going to alternate between the test and the original every 24 hours, and then it's going to collect the data. Once they collect the data and the test is complete, it's going to look something like this, where you're going to get a lot of analytics on how your original thumbnail performed over your variation thumbnail. And it's going to be pretty clear to you which one you should pick. Now, before I move along, I also want to mention that if you notice that your click through rate has anything over 5%, this is also an area where you want to double down on as well, because that's telling you that that video is doing better than usual. And ask yourself, did you change anything about the title, the topic, or the thumbnail that caused that? And if so, double down on what you changed that caused that lift in click-through rate. Naturally, because this is a funnel, essentially, if you have a high click-through rate and you've mastered the art of topics, titles, and thumbnails, then naturally you're gonna get more views. But what is another way for you to access information that's gonna help you easily, quickly, and fast to kind of pivot in your channel and figure out what's working and what's not? Well, I like to look at my top videos. There are two ways to do this, one super easy way and one more complex way. So let me share my screen and show you exactly how I look at the information. So the first way that's super easy to do, and you can also do it on your competitors, is just sorting people's videos by most popular to least popular. Then you're going to get a bird's eye view of what's really performing on their channel in terms of view. The next way to look at it is going into your channel analytics, going on overview, clicking views, and then hitting see more. And then from here, you're able to look at your videos from highest viewed to lowest viewed. By reviewing this information, it's going to be really easy for you to spot the trends on what's working and what's not working, especially in terms of topics for your channel. Now, moving down this YouTube funnel, the next thing that we have on our list is view duration. Now, I don't know about you, but I was super confused between the difference of view duration and watch time. So make sure you watch until the very end of this video so you get all your questions answered. Now, view duration essentially is on average, how much of your video are people watching? For instance, if you have a 10 minute video and YouTube is telling you on average, people are watching about one minute and that's your view duration, then your view duration is 10%. Now that's not a great view duration, is it? And so before I talk about the benchmarks and the key things that you can do on your channel to improve this metric, let's go into your YouTube creator studio and access your audience retention report, which is going to tell you everything you need to do about your videos. So to access your view duration information, you're going to want to be on the engagement tab. And here you can see your average view duration. Mine is quite low at five minutes and 54 seconds. So I definitely have room for improvement. Here, you can see some of the videos where people are still watching at the 30 second mark. So they're not just hopping off at the first second. And there's a lot of valuable information here. Here I can see the average percentage viewed for each of these videos. I can look at the intro, whether or not people are still hanging on after the 30 second mark. I can look at continuous segments. And when you click on this, this shows a portion of the video where people continuously watched it without dropping off. You can also look at spikes. These are the people that held people's attention the most. And then you can look at dips where people really lost interest. So here, a dip for me is whenever I plug my free training, people tend to skip over it or drop off. And here you can see a chart guide where YouTube tells you how to read the information. So when you see a straight line, it means that people are watching from start to finish. If you see a gradual decline, it means people are losing interest, which is what you see in my videos. Spikes tell you that people are more engaged on those elements. So you definitely want to double down on areas where people are spiking and then dips are where people are skipping that or moving to a specific part or jumping off entirely. And so I can tell that whenever I promote something, people tend to drop off. Now you can also look at view duration across the board by clicking see more. 
And here you'll be able to see your view duration by video and just look at the view duration that you've got. You also want to keep length of your video in mind. So for instance, if my view duration here is seven minutes and my video is let's say 10 minutes, then this has a really great view duration. Now let's talk benchmarks and what levers you can pull to improve your view duration. It's right behind me. 50%. We work really hard on our YouTube videos. If you're able to at least watch 50% of my videos, I'm already super grateful and super happy. And you want to make sure your audience watches at least half of your videos as well. Now, if you know that your audience retention, or sorry, if your view duration is less than 50%, then that tells you something. That means that if you have really important call to actions, make sure it's in the front rather than in the back. And also make sure that you do these five following things that I like to do in order to get your view duration to be higher. The first one is hooks. You want to make sure that throughout your video, especially in the intro, that you give people an incentive to stay until the end. And this could be saying something like this. In today's video, we're going to talk about ABCD topic. If you want XYZ result, then make sure you stay until the very end of the video because I have a tip you definitely don't want to miss out on. The second thing is making sure you have conciseness. This basically means that when you're talking in your videos, you're not rambling, you're getting to the point. Because like I said earlier, people have a really short attention span on YouTube and you want to make sure that you're not getting too deep on a particular subject or topic, unless that's what you want for your channel. The third one is B roll and graphics. Now, this is something where I talked about in my last video where I talked about how I messed up my YouTube channel and I kind of overdid a lot of these things. But at the same time, these things are still really important to make sure that people are staying engaged until the very end. A good example is this video right here. I've whipped out the whiteboard. This is the very first video on my channel where I've whipped up something like this. And that is because I want to make sure you guys stay engaged. And that's why I'm doing all of this. So B roll and graphics and having interesting things like this throughout your video is going to be able to make sure people stay engaged and don't drop off while watching your video. The next one is accuracy. Now we talked about getting your click through rate up. And a lot of that is making sure you have a great topic, great title and great thumbnail. Well, here's what happens. A lot of times people overdo it and they over promise in their thumbnails. They over promise in the title, or maybe the topic doesn't actually match what's actually being talked about in the content. If people are disappointed and they feel click baited and there is no accuracy in what you hook them in versus what content you're actually providing them, then guess what? The moment they realize that you've tricked them, they're going to hop off. And so it's really important that as, you're trying to get your click through rate up, you don't compromise the accuracy and the integrity of your video. Now, the next lever that you can pull is length. Now, the truth is, is that the shorter your videos, obviously your view duration might be higher. If you have a five minute video, people might watch three out of the five minutes and you're going to have a much higher view duration than anyone else. Just to interrupt the video a little bit because I am in the process of reviewing it, I realized I forgot a really important point when we're talking about video length. Remember that just because you have a shorter video doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be more successful because number one, if your videos are really short, you're not going to be able to rack up enough watch time, which we'll talk about later in this video. But also if you have a longer vlog and that's what your audience likes, then the fact that your video is longer, if your audience is watching more of that, then you're also going to be able to get a higher view duration. So remember that shorter videos doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be more successful. All right. So moving down the funnel, the next thing is, watch time. Now we always hear watch time is king on YouTube. In order to get monetized, you need at least a thousand subscribers and at least 4,000 hours of watch time. And so essentially what it means is how many hours people are spending watching your videos in general, in total. So let me share my screen and let's dive in to figure out how you can find this information. So to access your watch time, you're going to click on engagement. You're then going to see the total watch time in the period of time that you set it for. And also if you want to click on a particular video, you can go to the video analytics there. And here you will also see the total watch time that that video has produced as well. So when it comes to benchmarks for increasing your watch time, there really isn't any because it varies from industry to industry and you're really in competition for yourself. Now, the higher, the better is what I usually like to say when it comes to setting watch time goals. Now, what are the four levers that you can pull in order to increase your watch time? The lowest hanging fruit is going to be your cards and your end screens. Now, what exactly are these two things? 
For cards, it's essentially the things that show up when I say in my videos, hey guys, if you like today's video about YouTube analytics, did you know that I actually have a whole playlist with all of my videos about YouTube? Make sure you click right here in order to access it. Now, the whatever pops up right here is called a card. And so throughout your videos, you wanna make sure that you're also mentioning some other videos that would relate to the video that your viewers are watching. Because if halfway through the video, your audience is like, huh, I'm kinda of bored of this video, I'm not really into it, then at least throughout the video, you're sprinkling invitations for them to keep watching your other videos that they could be otherwise more interested in. That way, they're not completely clicking out of your channel. They still stay on your channel. They're just watching a different video and you're racking up the watch time. So that's what cards are for. Now, end screens are the things that show up at the end of the video like you see in this example. That is exactly why in my videos at the end, I always say, hey guys, if you like this today's video, make sure you watch these two videos that I have right here as well. I promise you're gonna like them because they're about social media and marketing. And so that's why at the end in your outro, you always wanna make sure you point people to your end screens. Now, moving on to the next lever that you can pull, and that is something called episodic content. This is something that I've been doing in the past on my channel, and I'm starting to do again now. And this is when you're trying to link all of your videos together to tell a story. So for example, in the beginning of this video, I mentioned, hey, in my last video where I talked about how I messed up my YouTube channel, I talked about ABCD, which led to this video being created. And the reason why I did that is because if you haven't watched this video yet, I want you to click on it so you can see how the story of my channel evolved. Not only this, at the end of the video, I might say something like, hey, if you like today's video, make sure you hit the notification bell because in my next video, I'm going to talk about A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And I actually did that in my last video where I literally teased you guys and told you guys that I would be talking about YouTube analytics in my next video. And the goal here is to make sure that in every single video, I'm trying to show you guys how each video relates to each other, kind of like a TV series. And so if you're someone who is like, whoa, I want to make sure I watched like next week's video, then you're going to hit the notification bell and you're going to watch that video next week, which would improve the amount of watch time that I get. And so that is definitely something that you want to consider doing on your channel is figuring out how you can streamline your content and tell a story throughout. And again, make sure you stay until the end because I'm going to show you how I'm going to do this exact method for my next week's video. Now, the third lever that you can pull is something that we talked about already, and that is hooks. And essentially it makes sense. If you have a hook in your intro that encourages someone from watch your video from beginning until the end, that's going to contribute to you getting more watch time, more minutes and more hours wrapped up to your channel. So YouTube knows that you are trying your best to get people to stay on the platform. Now, I actually did the hook not just in the intro for this video, but I've also done it throughout this video. Just two seconds ago when I was talking about episodic content, I literally told you guys, hey, don't forget to stay until the end because I'm gonna show you exactly how I'm implementing the episodic content method for my next video. So you definitely wanna make sure to do this throughout your video as well and not just in the intro. Now the next thing that you can pull is playlists. This is how you can actually create binge worthy content. And what I've done on my channel is I've organized all of my topics in playlists. And as a part of my strategy, whenever I actually upload a video, I make sure that each video that I have is put into the right playlist. Now, so far in this video, we've covered all of the metrics that you should be looking at for your YouTube channel. And at this point, I hope you're able to get less stressed as a content creator, you take back control. And as a result of this video, you're able to get more views, more subs, but more importantly, more peace because it is never fun to operate out of fear. And I really hope that this video gives you back the control so that you can take action on the things that you don't like about your channel right away with the numbers and hard facts. If you liked today's video and you learned a lot from it, I would appreciate it if you like this video itself so that I know and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss a single video. Now, if you want more exclusive private content from me, you definitely want to check me out at followers to clients.com. I have a free private 90 minute training that walks through my entire followers to clients system. 4,000 of my clients have already used the system and have been able to get visible and get paid. Now, Today, we've talked about how to fix a lot of the things that you don't like about your channel in five easy steps. 
However, in my next video, we're gonna cover Instagram because most likely if you're on YouTube, you're also on Instagram. So let's fix that engagement. Make sure you hit the notification bell because my next video is gonna cover pretty much the exact same things, but Instagram style. So you definitely don't wanna miss it. Now, as always guys, I post a lot of content on social media, marketing and entrepreneurship. So make sure you check out these two videos that I have right here as well. I promise they will not disappoint. And if you haven't noticed already, I'm already implementing a few of the tips I've shared with you today. As always guys, I appreciate you. I hope you guys have a great day, a great week and a great life and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.